I'm Alex, and welcome to a special episode of Ink Tank, filmed for Sideshow New York Con. I'm your resident New Yorker, and I'm thrilled to be pretending that this amazing group of artists are in town hanging out with me. Uh, this is pre-recorded, but we have pulled audience questions from our social channels, and we're happy to bring your questions to the artists. Now, for those of you who are watching here on Friday evening of Sideshow New York Con, we do have moderators in the chat, so you can interact with them, even if the artists and I are pre-recorded. So now, our first artist is the inimitable Mark Brooks. Now, Mark, say hello to everybody. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? I want to give everyone a rundown. Uh, you could find Mark's art in Marvel and DC covers. Like, if you haven't seen Mark's art on Marvel and DC covers, you're crazy. And as well as his Spider-Verse statue collection with Sideshow and a whole bunch of art prints with Sideshow. So, mm -hmm. Mark, are you ready for your uh, artist prompt? My challenge, yes, I'm ready. I'm challenging you to draw me a Suicide King playing card. A Suicide King playing card. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, get yourself get yourself all prepped. All right. So while we're uh, watching you do this art, I'm gonna throw some questions at you. Hopefully, I throw you off because that's my job here is to torment you. So, all how right. did you get your start drawing? Simple question. Uh, well. Um, I started as a kid, obviously. My father's a graphic designer, okay. so uh, I, I always uh, had like art supplies and things like that laying around. Um, and uh, my dad was very good about giving me lessons, uh, things like that. So I, I was just, I, it, it, I've always been around it. So it was kind of a natural thing, and, and it, it kind of runs in our family too. So, you know, that's, uh, that's how it started. That is definitely helpful. You know, oh, get, yeah. get some support on the artist side. Exactly. So that's awesome. But uh, I mean, so, so now you're an artist. So how did, so you started out, you know, you always had that support lying around, like, what do you suggest for artists that are starting out, you know, that are, you know, struggling, you know, everyone wants to find their success, find their, find their rhythm or anything. What do you suggest for artists that are, you know, like I said, just starting out? Um, you, you know, uh, well, first thing, obviously just draw every day. Um, but the great thing is, is that, People that are starting out right now, especially kids, have something I never had when I was a kid, which is they have uh, uh, these amazing resource called the Internet. <laughs> um, uh, I, I didn't have that. I mean, I had art classes I had to take or I, I wanted to take, but, um, you know, things like that. But, uh, you know, I didn't have this amazing resource where I could go into YouTube and type in, you know, how to digitally paint a tree, <laughs> you, you know, and, and yeah. you, you can type that in and you can find literally hundreds of videos, uh, tutorials, things like that. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, use, use your resources, use what you have, um, because that, that's the kind of stuff that's going to, that's going to uh, uh, make you a better artist. Um, yeah. So that, that'd be my suggestion and draw every day. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's how bad do you want this? I mean, the, 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 the difference between a successful artist and an unsuccessful artist really only comes down to who wanted it more. Um, right. So if you love it and you want to do this, you know, you'll do it hell or high water. I mean, that's, that's how I was as a kid. I was, I was going to draw comics or I was going to die. I mean, that's just the way it was. <laughs> Well, I'm very glad that you that you're drawing comics because you know yes. I'm glad to have you. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to talk to you today. <laughs> True. <laughs> so, so going to comics, like you wanted to draw comics like your whole life. Is that what you're saying? Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I wanted to draw as a kid. You know, yeah. just draw in, in general. But I, I bought my first comic when I was probably sixth grade or so. Mm -hmm. um, and and that was uh, that that just kicked it all off for me. I bought my first. It was an issue of X Men. Okay. And yeah, once, once I, once I got, got, uh, got my first comic, that was, that was it for me. I, I, I knew it's what I wanted to do. Okay. So X-Men, so you'd say X-Men is one of those stories, those comics that kind of like jump started your, uh, your whole interest in the whole genre. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, X-Men is still my jam. I mean, it's my, it's my, it's still my favorite thing to draw. Um, I love when Marvel <laughs> calls me and asks me to do an X, an X-Men cover. It's uh, it's a no brainer for me. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of your X Men covers, and actually, that leads me to a question about. So you do these covers, which are so ambitious, so ambitious. Because a lot of times, you know, you'll see a cover that has like, you know, a central character one, two, or three. You do covers that have like the entirety of the X Men universe um, in it, and, mm -hmm. and so, so I mean, like, like on the cover, like all special. So, do you find it, you know, with with all what you've done? that drawing like a really complicated background 
is harder or just drawing this huge spread of characters? I mean, because you have to yeah, you have to draw a lot in either situation. No, absolutely. Um, I, I, you know, it, it's funny how it happened. I love doing backgrounds. In fact, I, I collect original artwork and I have a tendency to buy artwork that has these really intricate backgrounds rather than these like heavy character centric um, covers because it's just kind of like what I'm into. Um, but the backgrounds definitely take longer. Um, that being said, th those multi-character pieces can can really, you know, uh, just they're, they're big time sucks. I mean, like when I did the <laughs> HOX cover, it was... Yeah. Um, I mean, God, it was what I think it was 30, 35 characters altogether. I stopped counting at one point. I was like, this is my head's hurting. Right. It's <laughs> so cool, though. I mean, and, and the thing is, I don't draw like most people do, which is, you know, they pencil and then they ink the characters and then a color is colors. And I, I'm doing all the rendering on every character um, so that by the you know when the piece is done by me, it's 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 print ready. So that that stuff, you know, it's it's all that rendering that really eats away at, at the time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. because, <laughs> and again, it's not just the X-Men. I mean, I saw you had an Avengers one, you had uh, the Batman family one that was out of control with the, with the Zatanna right there in the bottom center. Mm -hmm. like, oh, and I'm a huge Zatanna fan. So like, you know, obviously my eyeballs went right to it, but you the, do this a lot, you know? Those are my favorite. I, I the, the montages, because a lot of times when they want me to do all these multi-character pieces, they're always like characters existing in the same plane. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, the montages like that are so much fun because, you know, one of my favorite artists is Drew Struzan and, you know, he's the king of the montage. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, getting to, to, to do a montage like that is, is just, it, it, that, that's what I really love doing. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, especially talking about, you know, Drew Struzan is one of the kings of that kind of poster art. He inspired like so many people mm -hmm. uh, in that style. I mean, he is the movie artist, a uh, movie poster artist. So, I mean, other than Drew Struzan, like who is another artist that really drove forward your, uh, your passion? Uh, well, you know, the, the, the two comic artists that are, that are my, that are my, probably my biggest influence, especially when I was a kid were, um, Alan Davis and, uh, and, uh, Mark Silvestri. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, I absolutely love their work, especially Mark Silvestri, because his work is just so kinetic and it's 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 just it's so impressive um he did uh the, the i don't know if you guys know who chris claremont is i assume some of you guys oh, do yeah. uh, if you love x-men you know chris claremont yep exactly uh yeah uh mark did a, a lot of the run of uh claremont stuff before jim lee came on um and uh yeah just like follow the mutants the outback saga stuff like that those were always just you know always my favorite yeah I mean, if you love X-Men, and obviously, like, if you love X-Men comics, you have to know those names because they are, you know, they are the names when, especially, you know, the 80s, 90s, like, that's like, to me, that's like the pinnacle from, you know, from my age group, you know what I mean? No, I mean, mine too. I mean, you yeah. know, when I started reading in like, you know, what was that, the the, the mid 80s, that was, I mean, that was Pete Claremont, you know? Yeah. Pete, that's definitely Pete Claremont. Yeah. So, you know. So here's a question. I love this. What are some of your favorite pieces that you worked on? Because that is, uh, that is asking me to choose your favorite kid. Oh boy. It really is. Um, I, I you know, I would, I st I'm going to go back to that H O X P O X piece I did, uh, that was used for the, the, uh, the first two covers for H O X number one and P O X number one. Um, that cover, to this day still, I mean, it's been, a, you know, over a year now that that's, that's still the, the, the hardest I've ever worked on a cover. That cover took me a month to do. Wow. Um, just because, you know, so many characters and it had like a, it, they, they wanted it really chocked full of Easter eggs. So I spent a lot of time, you know, making sure all the costumes were correct and just adding all these little things to it. Um, you know, everything on there has a meaning, like even right down to like the gun cables hold, holding is not just any gun. It's a, uh, it's one of this, it's this, uh, nullifier gun that, that takes away, uh, mutants powers. Um, just little things like that. You know, there's a, there's a, uh, I can't remember the lobster's name, but the little lobster at the, mm -hmm. at the bottom, he's a character from, uh, from one of the X-Men spinoff books from back in the day, you know, just all these little, these little things uh, that we put in that, uh, just think it was really good. It almost has kind of a Sergeant Pepper kind of, kind of feel to it, which I we kind keep, of, keep looking and finding new things. And I mean, I think that's, I think it's probably a lot of fun that when you could do those giant character pieces with so many people on it that you could hide so much stuff. I mean, 
And it's our job, I guess, to look for it, right? Oh, exactly. I mean, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of covers you do uh, when I work on covers, I, I'm, I'm going for what I call the five foot rule. Because most people, when they're in a comic shop, they're looking at uh, the comic shelf from about five feet away, right? Um, so the five foot rule is your cover should be easily readable from five feet. But that those that particular cover, or I guess two covers, um, we did something different, which is you know we wanted it to be a, a discovery cover, um, where you know it's it's pleasing to the eye from five feet away, but you might not necessarily know what's going on. But if you pick it up and and, and stare at it and look at it, you, you know you can discover all kinds of really cool things with it. The new the new rule is is draw something that from three inches away with a magnifying glass. Right. <laughs> you can pick up everything, all those little details. Exactly. You know? So you've done a lot. You've drawn a lot of characters. I can't even count how many characters you've drawn. Just just picking five covers that I've looked at, you know, like I, you've drawn like hundreds of characters. What is a character across all of pop culture that, you, that you've never gotten to really draw, that you would love to draw? Um, you know, I give the same answer. People always, when they ask me this, I yeah. really want There's two of them actually that I like, and obviously I've drawn these characters for fun or for like con sketches, but I've never gotten to draw them in an official capacity. Um, but I would love to do um, a tank girl. Oh, get uh, it. yeah. Right. I mean, you know, Jimmy Hewitt's still one of my favorite artists and I really want to do uh, some official Hellboy. Oh, you're speaking my, you just spoke my language twice. <laughs> you don't understand. I'm going to campaign. Everyone who's watching campaign for this because man, Hellboy is one of my favorite comics, favorite characters in all of comics. And of course, Tank Girl is so badass. So badass. So I'm, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking forward to that. I'm going to be looking forward to watching you, uh, you know, do your own run. Cause that would be amazing. That it would be awesome. I mean, please, uh, if, if anyone knows Mike Mignola, uh, shoot him an, e an email for me. Uh, you know, I'm just going to get on an email. He don't know me, but I'm just going to still do it anyways. I'm like, hey, Mike, <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Guy. You know you want to do it. Do me a solid. Give me a solid. Do, come on. Do me a solid. So you've done them as commissions. Like, uh, obviously, now we're in con season. And sadly, you know, we're not at con. So the, the commission season is also kind of tough. Um, what has... What has been your weirdest, most obscure, or wildest commission that you've ever had to do? Uh, I had a, a guy uh, come up and ask me if I would draw um, uh, Frodo and Samwise in a compromising position oh. uh, with each other. Okay. Um, I, I, I didn't do it. All right. <laughs> um, not because, I mean, I'm, I'm not against anything like that, but, uh, you know, when, when you're working for Marvel, mm -hmm. it, 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 you got to be careful about what kind of artwork gets out there with your name on it. Okay. And, you know, they, they, I don't know how much they would appreciate uh, one of their artists uh, basically drawing porn. So, you know, I, I avoid any kind of porn, but that was the strangest because he was really excited to, to get this done. And it seemed yeah. like, I don't even think he knew who I was. Um, okay. I, I think that he was just walking through Artist Alley and saw an yeah. artist and was like, I'll try this guy. And I could tell that when I was like, ah, I probably wouldn't be able to draw something like that, that he just <laughs> moved on to the next guy until yeah. he found someone that was willing to do it. <laughs> well, you know what? So you didn't do that one. What, which, what strange ones have you done? Uh, you know, I haven't done any, any really super strange sketches. You know, every once or in a while... Obscure. You know. Yeah, obscure. I've done some obscure stuff. I mean, every once in a while, you'll get someone that comes up and wants you to draw their original character. And mm -hmm. I don't do it as much now because uh, m most of the time these guys are so married to their characters that they, 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 they're they very particular about how they want it drawn. And right. it's just usually too much of a pain in the ass to deal with. But back in the day, I used to do it. And there were some really weird, like, you know, anamorphic kind of, kind of characters. There were mm -hmm. some... Um, uh, uh, you know, aliens, just things like that. And the thing is, a lot of these guys, because a lot of these guys that that, that have their own original characters aren't aren't artists themselves, or they're just on the amateur side. And so, a lot of these characters are very um, they're not necessarily designed well. Um, but and, and you know, no no shot to to the people who designed them, but they're just they don't have the chops yet to like know how to really design a character. Um, so trying to take their character and then make it more interesting is it is a challenge that's always you know kind of fun right well i mean it, i mean you know it is a challenge for you which is always i guess fun as an artist you know no absolutely you know um 
you know, I, I still to this day, you know, one of my favorite things to do is is create characters, which I don't I don't get called on to do that very often as a cover artist. You don't get to create characters much. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's a lot of fun when you can. So now talking about cons, talking about quarantine, talking about, you know, the whole 2020 situations. What have you been doing to keep yourself sane while you're uh, while you've been stuck at home? You know, you, you're, you're looking at it. That's um, it. Yeah. I mean, since there's no cons, I just decided that this is going to be the year that I'm going to just absolutely dive into my artwork. Um, and so I, I just spent, you know, every day pretty much doing this. I mean, and luckily I have a family here, so I have a wife and, and my son who's 13. So he's at that fun age where, you know, we can play video games together and things like yeah. that. So, so, you know, I, I have a playmate. At, at here that, that I get, I get to hang out with. It's, that's a lot of fun. And, um, and luckily my wife is really cool. So my wife is also my manager. So, okay. yeah, so she, uh, you know, we, we haven't suffered like some people do where they've had to go back to work. You know, Lisa, her job is here, you know, with me. Right. So, you know, we, we pretty much, this is my day anyway. So even if everything wasn't on lockdown or, or, or people weren't nervous about going out, I would still be doing this same thing. Which is good because, you know, it's it's familiar and you're comfortable and that's the best part about it, you know? No, absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm our job is very solitary. You know, yeah. we don't we don't have um, an office to go to. We don't have coworkers. I mean, unless you like, like I said, you count my wife or, you know, my dog. Um, well, the dog so, is very important. It, it, she, she is um, definitely. So, yeah, we've got a dog and a cat, which, you know, are, 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 are nice. The good stress relievers. Yeah. I'm looking at my cat right now. She's passed out sleeping. She's not interested in anything I'm doing. <laughs> my cat's very similar to that. I know the feeling. Yeah. They don't care what we're doing. So, so if, I'm sorry, uh, if you uh, could be at a con right now, if you could be at a con right now, what's your favorite part of a con? Like, um, is it walking around? Is it doing commissions? Is it meeting other artists? You know, you know, I mean, I love it all. The con experience is, is an amazing experience um, just because, you know, you get to I get to finally get out of my cave and, and hang out with my friends and stuff and, and just, you know, meet new people and meet the fans. But I would say definitely it's it's being able to hang out with my peers um, because we, we all it, it's almost like um, we're all in the military together or something. <laughs> You know, because we all we all have the same experiences. You know, we all we all have we all understand where each other are coming from. You know, we can we can vent with each other, and everyone knows you know what you're going through. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I really do miss that. I mean, luckily we have Skype and stuff like that, but you know, it's it's not the it's not the same. Rather those post con meetups after work after work, so to speak. You know what I mean? You get to hang out, vent unload after the day you know oh absolutely and plus i mean my wife and i i mean you know people always uh, you know people always talk about well what would you do if you won the lottery i mean if i won the lottery you know cars and houses are great but honestly i think lisa and i would just travel um that's it, it, that's it, the dream i mean honestly tr i'm with you with that traveling is the dream yeah, I mean that that that's the fun part of life to me. I mean, you know, you, you, the only thing you can take with you at the end of the day is experiences, and and so yeah, that, that's that's what I would want. I would want more experiences. What's your uh, What's your favorite place you've ever traveled? Uh, our favorite place to go is Japan. Um, we we we've been there four times now, and uh, we go, we try to go every year. Um, we're not going this year. Uh, we, we usually go over the Thanksgiving break. Um, okay. but this year, obviously, uh, it's, it looks like it's not going to happen. Um, but we will be going back again next year. And luckily there's a convention there, uh, at the end of November every year. So we go there, uh, for two weeks and then, you know, one day of the convention, we go, uh, and, and do the convention with all the Japanese fans and the convention pretty much pays for our trip. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. So that, that's a good deal. Yeah, it works out really well, you know. I mean, you basically sit down for like eight hours a day or eight hours one day on a Saturday. And by the end of the show, our trip is done. Our trip is paid for. So it's awesome. That is awesome. I, I got to start doing that. I got to start figuring out how to travel places. But what do I can, what can I do that's interesting? Now it's your turn to give me ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do something interesting. I could travel somewhere and just have something paid for it. I don't know. 
Maybe I'll just interview people all the time. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, contact the show and be like, hey, I'll come out and interview. You know, give me a plane ticket and a hotel room. (laughs) Plane ticket and a hotel room. I'm just going to I'm going to do what I do, which is what I love right now, which is getting to talk to amazing artists like you. So exactly. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, is there any, so we're wrapping up now this, this suicide King, I'm going to give you my address so you could send it to me because it's freaking amazing. Thanks, man. I'll happily send this to you. You got it. No, I mean, I, you don't have to send it to me. That's a beautiful piece. Someone else no. should have that. I don't deserve it, but, but I love it. Um, is there anything you would like to plug um, anything going on? Yes. Uh, we are going to be launching my online store. Um, where uh, we're going to have uh, prints and sketchbooks and all that fun stuff. Um, I've got a few Sideshow prints that I think uh, are sold out at Sideshow, but we've got a few copies that we're going to release uh, on our web store. Um, so uh, it, you can go to martbrooksart.com. Uh, right now it'll take you to a website called Comic Sketch Art, and that is my my, my uh, manager that uh, deals with selling my my. Uh, uh, comics and things like that but okay. that will be switching over to my store website in the next two weeks or so so you can go ahead and go there and uh and and bookmark it or if you know i guess you're showing this to new york comic con so it might be open by then so oh good i hope yeah. so because then i'm going to start spending more money thanks for spending more of my money how am i supposed to go on vacations if you keep spending my money my friend well you know the, the key to that is you do what i do when it comes to sideshow things you don't buy one you buy two and then you and then you wait a couple of weeks or, or a, cu- a couple of months when sideshow sold out, and you put one of them on eBay to pay for your first oh, one. No, this guy's f- no flippers, no flippers. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, if sideshow sold out, why do you guys care, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the way you think. It's dirty, but I like it. It is dirty. I, I, I do it with sneaker. I'm a sneaker head, and I always. Oh, really? I, I buy Yeezys and things like that. And I usually buy two, I, I buy two pair and then I sit on the other pair for about six months. And then I use that pair to pay for both. All right. See, so there you go. All the artists who are struggling, you, now you have another, another avenue to take your, uh, to take, you get art and you can do sneaker flipping. <laughs> I love it. I'm telling you, you got, you, you know, it, it's weird times now. It's, you know, we got to use our heads. Yeah. Well, got to be creative. <laughs> Got to be creative. That's, you know, that's the main thing that's going to get us all through life is creative ways and adaptation. Absolutely. All right. Well, Mark, thank you so much. It was awesome meeting you. Awesome talking to you. And this card is excellent. Thanks, man. Thank you. You did a really great job. You rose to the occasion. I'll I'll, I'll put some some color to it and I'll send it to you. Sweet. (laughs) And then I'm going to put it on eBay so I can make (laughs) it. <laughs> hey, if you're a huge fan. Exactly. You got it, man. I like it. All right, brother. Thank you so much. And, no uh, problem. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Great talking to you. Have a good one, man. All right. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> and uh, you know, you know, pay, pay attention to my eBay listings for that for that Mark Brooks original. All right. Our next guest is the incredible Greg Simpkins, aka Crayola. He's uh, best known for the surreal worlds he creates as well. He also did uh, designer figures for Unruly Industries, which uh, are up on the site now. Uh, And I wanted to remind you while uh, we're all getting set up that there are two more days for Sideshow New York Con with giveaways, live streams, and more. So make sure you head to side.show slash NYCon to keep up with the daily events. And now, Greg, what is going on, my friend? How you doing, Alex? Uh, I'm doing good. It's nice to see you. You like my backdrop? Yeah. See, I'm in New. I'm actually in New York, but like I'm in my apartment. So this is how I feel like I'm outside. You know, I can sit here and pretend I'm getting exercise. <laughs> That's cool. So That's what cool. can I have you draw? Let's see. You do mm-hmm. realistic. Oh and gosh. You, and you do animals. Mm-hmm. The thing we- that I love that you do is the animals that are in environments that they're not supposed to be in. Right. I do that. Yeah. Morph weird. Cartoony, surrealistic animals. Seahorse on a bicycle. <laughs> Seahorse on a tricycle? Ah, unicycle. Unicycle. All right. Let's move that. Seahorse on a unicycle. There you go. Let's move that. Uh-oh. Let's drink some uh, fuel. Yeah, get that fuel. And I love the stabby cup, by the way. I oh, love yeah. that stabby cup. Got to have my stabby cup. Got to have your stabby. So actually... Uh, I'm going to start with a question that uh, Kevin on Facebook 
asked, and it's related to Stabby, that what got, so you do mostly uh, this surrealistic style, like what got you interested in doing that, like classic cartoony style for Stabby? Well, I, it has to be just growing up watching cartoons, you know, yeah. like I'd go to school, come home, watch cartoons. We got the Disney Channel probably right when cable came out and they would show a lot of the old black and white cartoons and I would uh, got into that that style, you know. Um, I was always drawn to, you know, Felix the Cat and Mighty Mouse and Mickey Mouse, of course, but whenever I could get my hands on some the older stuff, I'd really just dig into it. So all the pie-eyed, you know, wobbly arms and stuff, yeah. I was totally into it. So that's where Stabby came from. And for a while, like in my graffiti, I was going around and spray painting Oswald the Lucky Rabbit mm -hmm. all over like walls. A lot of a lot of them in Long Beach and stuff, just because I liked his story about how he's kind of like Mickey Mouse's a, a strange older stepbrother. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, <laughs> just because of how he kind of got kicked to the wayside and Mickey Mouse took over whatever he could have been. Right, and they had that um, video game too for that, right? Yeah. Um. Epic Mickey or whatever it was. Yeah. So, yeah, and I thought that was pretty cool. So, but, yeah, I like old cartoons. <laughs> so what, what would you say your your favorite of all the, because you, you like the old classic stuff, but what, what is your favorite, like, Disney cartoon? Like, is it a movie? Is it, specific, you know, one of the shorts? Oh, gosh. Uh, Fantasia. Oh, that's, that's... I always come back to Fantasia and then the Reluctant Dragon. Like, I like the Reluctant Dragon because they take a whole tour through the animation process and you get to see all the weirdness behind the scenes stuff and i just like the characters and they show the behind scenes stuff for gumbo and casey jr which is all things that i love i've, I've been right. planning out some kind of casey jr painting for years i just i keep working on it a little bit here and there because oh. uh it's gonna happen i because i like trains and stuff like that because in graffiti like one of the main things that dudes do is paint trains. And so I want to do a Casey Jr. that's been all bombed up and has graffiti all over it. I just got to make it still feel whimsical and surreal at the same time. So I've been planning this painting out for a while. Well, if I would have known, I would have made that your, your drawing prompt. I would have said, <laughs> all right, draw me. <laughs> and you could be like, oh, look, I'm half done. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so, my drawings on the spot tend to be super messy as do most of my sketches. Unless I'm like sitting down and like really going for it. Like there's so many times I've been like signing at a convention and people throw something at me. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to draw Oswald the Lucky Rabbit for you and a tag. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's easy. So, I mean, so you do the convention circuit, right? And obviously we can't be at New York Comic Con right now. Right. So, so what do you miss most about, about conventions? I used to like, just walking around and seeing all the cool stuff, like seeing what all the artists were doing and that part was cool. Or like, I just like talking to people that would come to signings and get to meet new people and have good conversations and then go eat good food while I'm out and hang out with the, the best part is hanging out with friends that I never get to see, like in general, I'm usually in the studio. And so it's like a good opportunity to, to see friends. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing with us, uh, with us geeks, you know, and especially in the age of the internet, we make friends all over the world. Yep. And you know, those conventions, like I have so many friends that I've, that I've missed that I haven't seen in like well over a year, almost some of them in two years because of that. So I, I get that feeling, you know, the pain of not going to see them. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's always a good, a good reason to, to catch up with people. Yeah. So, so what are you doing at home to uh, keep yourself sane, keep yourself sane other than other, you know, you're, I know you've got to do a lot of art, you know, so. Yeah. I'm painting, just doing painting commissions and working on new painting ideas and working on a lot of like drawings, like, like these drawings right now I'm working on, I have a, we're working on a new book. So I just want to, I have my messy mind drawings. Like I do in my sketchbooks, which right. later turn into paintings. So just whatever free flowing stuff. And then I start writing stories to connect the characters in the sketches. And then they later become the paintings. And that's usually my process. It all starts with like messy drawings. Even the messy drawing like this will turn into something later on. See, I've, I've inspired the next uh, giant mural. Hopefully you're going to be painting. You did. I should draw Aquaman on here. Oh my gosh. Or Black Manta 
riding with Aquaman. Like, <laughs> no, I want, I want this to be 100% you. 100% you. I want you on there. Right. <laughs> so you do you do mostly traditional, right? You don't do digital. No, I, I mean, I can do digital. I, I My previous job was at 14 or 15 years ago. I worked for Activision as a background artist for video games. So I worked on three of the Spider-Man titles. I worked on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. I worked on Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer and the snowboard game I was on, which never came out, which was awesome. But stupid SSX Tricky came out or whatever it's called. Uh, and they shelved nah. us. But at that time, I got pulled up to Spider-Man. So I got my job for the first couple of months of working on the Spider-Man video games, which is to sit and read comic books in my office. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. This is that sounds like a terrible job. Yeah, it was so awesome. That's terrible job and actually some oh go ahead go ahead oh i was gonna say someone uh, i was looking through the questions that i pulled from facebook and uh that kevin character this kevin from facebook actually asked like having worked on tony tony hawk pro skater 2 have you seen the remaster oh yeah we got it the day it came out like my son i said i have a 13 year old son and an eight year old son yeah and my 13 year old is a skater he loves skating like most of our time we spend together is i take him to skate parks or take him to like schools where nobody's at or just wherever parking lot, just let them skate and I'll they'll push around with them a bit too. And so he was just like, dad, hook up the old Xbox. So he played my version of it, like the weeks right. before it came out. And then when we got the new one, oh my gosh, the graphics are so good. I can't believe the way, how far technology has come, especially like when we redid it for two X, right. we were like doing them a favor, like upping all the graphics, but now it's just unbeatable. It looks so good. It's quite amazing when you look at like an original piece and like, you know, sometimes you're kind of like you're paying, you're paying tribute to the legacy, but then you're moving forward and it just making it, you know, so much more up to date, but it's like, you know, you still get the feel from the old classic because back then we thought those graphics were the, like top of the line. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. <laughs> I was so proud of that game. And now I like, go turn it off. Just, I don't want to see it ever again. No, be still be proud. No, no, I know. I'm kidding. I, I'm yeah. proud. I, it, it was a fun time, too. It was the best um, job, aside from painting full-time, that I ever had in my life was working on that game. Everybody I met there and worked with were such great people, and it just it was rad over at Treyarch. It was, it was yeah. a good studio to work at. That sounds like a blast. I'm jealous. Ah, it was fun. It was one of those scary moments. I was like working in the streetwear industry. And just trying to figure out what to do, what my next move was. I wasn't happy there. And a bunch of my friends had gone over to Treyarch that I was working as an illustrator with. And I was like, dude, is there any way I could get in there? And I just kept bugging them, bugging them, bugging them. I put my portfolio together, got in there for an interview and got hired and just changed my life. It was such a, such a rad moment getting that job. I'm jealous. I, I'm still jealous. I wish I could do that. <laughs> But I get to talk to you about it, and I get to relive it through you vicariously. Right. So, so um, with your traditional drawing work, uh, what are your preferred artist tools? My number one thing I like to do these days is just paint with acrylics, um, acrylic paints. Um, that's pretty much taken over everything I do. And then besides that, like, like pencil, graphite, charcoal, pen and ink. Um, I do digital. I like to mess around in Illustrator a lot and, and make graphics. And then my original painting tool was spray paint. That's why I learned to paint. I wasn't, I didn't learn to paint in college. I, I was just doing illustration classes. And for the most part, it was like either marker comps, pencil, um, you know, pen and ink, watercolor, which is still painting, I guess. But I didn't really learn to paint and I was anxious to get out of there. So I switched my major to studio art. But the entire time, ever since I was 17, I was doing graffiti. And all the guys in my crews that were older than me were already using like acrylics and stuff. And they're the ones who said, hey, you got to start trying this stuff out, paint with a brush. And it, it was like, I'm like, how's this look? No, that's stupid. Try it like this. <laughs> so it was just like, it was a it was a fun way to learn how to paint. It was, and I, it transferred from the spray paints over pretty smoothly because spray paint dries fairly quickly. Right. And you just need to learn how to do your layers and how to use the transparent paints versus the opaque paints. And so I just kind of like slowly graduated into acrylics. And then that really took over. I'm like, well, I could do so much more with this stuff. So, yeah, 
started. It all started from spray painting. It all started from graffiti, which is, you know, like me, I'm really big into designer toys, which is why I love, you know, what you did with Unruly, the, the you know, the, the Magi and Mar Marais? Marais. Yeah. Merit. Oh, see, I always want to say Merit. I was like, I bet you I'm saying it's wrong. I bet you it's Murray. No, you're <laughs> but, right. Uh, it's and Merit. Stabby, like I love designer toys and a lot of the people in designer toy culture, they they kind of graduated, you know, from graffiti culture or yeah. sneakerhead culture, you know, which I was, you know, speaking with uh, Mark Brooks before he was in, he's a sneakerhead, you know what I mean? So it's like all these artistic cultures kind of mix together over that. That's right. You know, which I find is fascinating. Yeah, I kind of got into the designer toy stuff from my buddy Tyke. He was doing toys for a long time ago, like before a lot of us graffiti guys. And I was just like, wow, how are you getting that done? I want to make toys, you know, and it was just, I feel blessed to have been able to do, you know, have toys out and stuff too. Like, I think the first one I did was with Strange Co. or Upper Play, long time ago. I, I was just like, wow, I get to make toys. This is crazy. I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd be making toys and drawing weird characters all day and just getting to paint it, it i still pinch myself it's crazy i mean it, you are living that dream you know what i mean you're an artist and you're getting your stuff out there and people are loving it and now again with the toys you, you know you get like you're you're checking off all those uh those little kid dream boxes you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it's fun to, to have my kids get to experience it too and i get to ask what they like and like if I'm drawing up my version of a dunny or something, like, right. nah, do it more like this. I'm like, all right. Or I'll sit and I've, since the quarantine started, me and my youngest son started a sketchbook together and he would draw something that I'd redraw his drawing and then he'd come back and redraw my drawing and slowly teach. I taught him how to do one and two point perspective throughout this right. book. And then he did a Zoom call and taught a bunch of his little friends on it. It was really cute. Oh, and that's uh, amazing. It's fun to see their imaginations and stuff. I think I probably, I, I still draw this cartoony stuff just because I'm reliving it with them this whole time too, so. And I mean, that's perfect. I mean, you have your kids that give you, you know, that young, fresh perspective. Cause you know, you know, we're, we're getting old, we're getting, we're old people now. So, you know, we don't always have that, that young, fresh thing to get it from them, you know, especially like you said, with the toys and the drawings, I think that's amazing that you're sort of, you know, not infecting, but you're spreading that love of art, not only from you to your children, but to their friends now, you know what I mean? That's pretty, it's pretty intense. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun to talk to their friends too. I, I do the, the care, was it career day stuff back mm -hmm. when schools and be fun to hear all the little questions in the class and all yeah. that they usually just ask why do you have so many tattoos because they're little kids. <laughs> like you'll be next come up come up I, you bust out a tattoo gun all right you're next get, get up here <laughs> so uh, so what do you feel like you know you draw a lot of two dimensions you know all these, a lot of you know most of your stuff is two-dimensional but three-dimensional like for designing for those toys designing for stabby and designing for those previous uh uh pieces that you that you spoke about like uh -huh. what are the challenges like switching from one to the other so like i i know i have a lot of barriers i'm not, like like doing turnarounds sucks for me because i generally don't like right. doing turnarounds i like to make like a composition it is what it is and then it comes to like, okay, this needs to be a toy that stands and, you know, works in three dimensions. And a lot of my drawings are really top heavy with really thin spindly legs and arms. Yeah. Stuff that generally wouldn't be able to stand on its own in real life. And I remember the very first toy I, I, just, I was trying to get put out a long time ago. It was like a rocking horse reindeer, but its legs came so thin onto the onto the rockers and the guy they can't do it can't do it can't change design I'm like this doesn't even look like my character now because i was so like adamant about doing like those thin thin to thick like things so right. extreme fact, transition yeah it's funny like you were talking about magi and merit they actually pulled it off getting those thin legs and stuff on it especially on merit which i was like yeah you guys did it like it was yeah that idea i had years ago that they pulled it off so i was really stoked with unruly i'm like that was rad some technology and uh, you know access to different you know materials obviously you know changes over the years so now now it works so yeah. but now here's the surprise i need you to do a turn 360 turnaround for that in three minutes because we're going to be yeah, right that's what we got to do right now never gonna happen <laughs> when we did our uh, our stop motion short uh i'm scared the movie i had my characters and stuff my little um character ralph with the white batman suit on and yeah. um 
the director p levin's like okay i need turnarounds of those i'm like i kept trying to get get around it trying to get away from it I'm like yeah you sure how about this three-quarter view it'll work right and oh no did it and i did the turnarounds i was just like ah, i want to go paint though i don't want to sit and do turnarounds so i have my my certain things i like to do and things i don't like to do but i'll do them well, then you're just letting me down now. I can't have my 360 degree seahorse on a unicycle, which is, by the way, so awesome. Uh, <laughs> I got one more question before I uh, I ask you uh, to plug something. Uh, Lydia on Facebook wanted to know: uh, Do you have an inspiration like Hieronymus Bosch? Are you inspired by artists like Hieronymus Bosch because you're of your surrealistic style? Absolutely, he's like up there for me. Love him. Yeah, I read a paper about him and art school and stuff like that. I love Hiram Bosch. I love, uh, and then I love Dr. Seuss. I love Miyazaki. I love Caravaggio. I'm like all over the map. It, it's right. so many things just kind of brain dump right here. Salvador Dali, obviously, like, it's like we had the book on the table growing up and then I'm watching cartoons. It's like, it's going to kind of meet each other someplace in the middle, you know? Right. All those different styles crashing together kind of gives you that inspiration. That's right. Yeah. You know, for sure. So, uh, so my friend, do you have anything you'd like to plug? You got anything coming up that you want to talk about? We have uh, new print releases coming up. We just did a new print release, and then possibly my Kitron character. We're going to do a Kitron print release, and then um, yeah, new merch is going up on the online store. Working on a couple of secret projects, and then working on a new book. So stay yeah, tuned. all right, perfect. Well, sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you for this amazing drawing. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully soon, man, hopefully we get to hang out in real life. You know what I mean? Hopefully you get to come out and hang out in a real New York street. That's right. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. Thank you for being with us, man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Have a good one, man. Just a quick reminder. There are two more days to Sideshow New York Con. So head to side.show slash NYCon to keep up with our daily giveaways, live streams, and events. So here I'm introducing our final artist, Mr. Joe Delegata. He is a freelance illustrator, he does amazing cover and interior work, as well as his original book, Holy Diver. He also has designed the Mad Titan designer toy for Unruly Industries and the Blanca Unleashed figure for Icon Heroes that are both up at Sideshow. That was a mouthful. What's going on, Joe? Uh, not too much. Just hanging out. How you doing? I'm all right, man. I'm just chilling glad to talk to some artists see them do some beautiful stuff so what am i going to give you to draw right i want you to draw one of your holy diver original characters the diver yeah absolutely i can do that draw, draw me the job yeah draw me the diver joe that's a that's a that's a tongue flipper. <laughs> that joe anyways so uh, and while you're at it tell us a little bit about the uh the story tell us a little about the holy diver uh, the Diva is my little love letter to uh, Ray Harryhausen, Clash of the Titans, uh, Indiana Jones, that's that sort of stuff. It's a classic adventure. Yeah, it's a nice adventure story. It takes place during World War II, and it's got uh, it's got all sorts of stuff. It's got the Diva. It's got sea creatures. It's got sea hags nothing uh, i love more than a sea hag yeah it's got a town that's somewhat local to me gloucester massachusetts which is a, oh. a shipyard town so that's uh that's a, that's about it i uh i'm a big fan i'm a big fan of the state of massachusetts by the way even despite being a new yorker i'm a big fan of the state of massachusetts um yeah. I hold no grudges. I'm a big fan of the Dropkick Murphys, my friend. I am. I used to play up in. Uh, I used to be in a band. I used to play at the 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 what you call the Worcester Mass, the the, the heavy metal and harp. Yeah, the Palladium. No, nope. used to play at the Palladium. Where you had a band. We used to play with bands up there. It was great. Good time. That's awesome. Yeah, I played. Uh, I never played at the Palladium, but I was in a couple of bands when I was in my you know older high school years. Yeah, that was that's a long time ago for me, my friend. What did you play? Oh, I was the I was like a death metal singer. I was nice. like, raw. <laughs> so we used to play the 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 New England hardcore metal fest. So that's up in awesome. Worcester. Yeah. So, seen so a lot of shows there. A lot of shows there. Oh yeah, it's, it's a great place to, to to see a show too. So yeah. How, so how did you uh, get your start drawing? 
I've been drawing since I was very young, three three years old, roughly. I, mm -hmm. I was always drawing as a kid. Uh, cartoons I'd see on TV, I'd copy the stuff. Stuff I'd see in comic books, I'd you know, I'd copy that, um, and then started drawing my own stuff eventually. Uh, going back to some of my early influences. Uh, Frank Frazetta. I used to look at a lot of fantasy art. My oh, cousin, absolutely. my cousin had a fantasy art book when I was little, and I'd I would always borrow it from him. And uh, it was mostly Frank's work. And then uh, Nintendo Power magazine was a big influence on me. I I'd, I'd always mm -hmm. draw the illustrations that were in there. That is a new. That is the first time I've seen. I've heard someone pull out Nintendo Power magazine as an influence. But really. Yeah, they. I mean, they always had art in there, right? They always had yeah. drawings, all sorts of stuff. It was. It was mostly the Mega Man stuff that attracted me because I'm a huge Mega Man fan. I was going to say, I know, I, I, from following you on social and seeing <laughs> what you do, I know that you're a big fan of Mega Man. Oh yeah. See all the toys back there too. Yeah, I get, I get quite a few. So, who's your favorite Mega Man villain? Uh, Bomb Man. Yeah. yeah he's my favorite. <laughs> So yeah, so a, a lot of those influences, like okay, so by the way, Frank Frazetta, I mean that's a, that's definitely, I feel like that fantasy art and the detail and you know his painting style was, was very influential on a lot of people. So that's a natural. But the Nintendo Power, I like that. That's a good one. Yeah. Any other artists that stick out in your mind? Um, I, I have uh, a lot of friends that are into in, big into comics. Uh, yeah. My my buddy Andrew McLean. Mm -hmm. He does a book called Headlopper, and that is just a fantastic adventure book. Um, and the art style is such an original style, too. Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with it? Yeah. No, I don't. I, I even saw, I think you got that figure back behind you, too. Yeah. I think I saw a Headlopper back there. Yeah, he's up there. Uh, but yeah, Andrew's work is, is some of my favorite. Uh, a lot of my friends that we chat with every day and just talk shop. Uh, my buddy Ricardo Lopez Ortiz. My friend Clay McCormick, uh, my friend Sean Murphy, our friend Corinne Howell. We all we all do comics. My buddy Christian Dabari, he does horror comics. Yeah. We all uh, we all chat on a daily basis. Show each other what we're working on. Shoot the breeze about the industry. Keep uh, each other honest, right? Yeah. Because I know sometimes, you know, artists get frustrated with what you're doing. Sometimes it's good to have someone to bounce stuff off of. Oh, totally. We, we all help each other out. You know, sometimes we'll get stuck on something. We'll look to each other for some some insight. Right. You know, sometimes you, you're too close to your own work and you need another set of eyes on it to maybe see something that you didn't notice. So it's it's all very helpful. Of course, you got to break each other's chops too. Does that also help? Oh, I can't tell you about some of that stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was thinking—I thought I was going to trick you into giving me the scoop about who's talking <laughs> smack. Come on. <laughs> so, Frazetta, you said you know yes. one of your big influences. Is there any other uh, fandom or lore? We got Frazetta, we got Mega Man, we got Nintendo. I, I want to dive more into that Nintendo thing too. Yes. So. Like that inspired your style too, because you said, and and this is like a Harryhausen inspired uh, uh, comic. Yeah, the diver is yes. Yeah, that's very Harryhausen stuff. Uh, that had a big impression on me as a kid, seeing all the stop motion, all the cool monsters and stuff. So, so let me ask you a question, right? What's your question? You're from Boston, Boston, or just Massachusetts? Uh, I I live. I've lived literally 10 minutes from Boston my whole life. Uh, Perfect. So we're gonna... my time at art school. All right. Perfect. So we're going to say Boston, right? Yep. So how does where you're from inspire your art and inspire you to, to inspire you to be an artist? Cause I know uh, sometimes the locale can affect it, you know, it, I think it can, uh, you know, like I said, my the, the Diver book does take place in Gloucester, Massachusetts, which is about a half hour north of Boston, maybe mm -hmm. 40 minutes. But uh, just being within a short driving distance of that kind of scenery, you know, having the water by you, having the ships by you, uh, you know, it's it's a nice headspace to be in when you're in that area. 
Um, Boston's known as a very kind of blue collar, you know, worker type area. With a lot of history too. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think some of that gets into my work as well. I, I would hope a little bit. Um, yeah. I'm Lark. By the way, I'm just watching your lines. I'm watching your line work. What What is your preferred uh, uh, artist tools? Because you do everything traditionally, right? Um, yes, I, I work traditionally. Uh, I have worked digitally here and there. Mostly if I'm coloring something, I'll work digitally. Uh, but aside from a short stint at a video game studio, everything else has been traditional. No. My, my layouts lately, I've been doing on the iPad and Procreate, which I really like. It's, it's helped me speed things up quite a bit. Um, and I'm, I'm terribly slow, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> Listen, slow and steady, my friend. Slow yeah. and steady. You don't want to rush it. You want it to look good. Yeah. So, um, but I, I just like the, the traditional aspect just because... I like having an original piece that's tangible once I'm done with it. Um, occasionally I will sell artwork. So it's nice to have the originals. Um, that's, that's no knock on digital work. It's just, you know, I'm one of those guys who enjoys that saying from Indiana Jones, like it belongs in a museum. Yeah. It belongs in a museum, but yeah, I it like belongs it. in a collection. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like I, I collect original art myself. Yeah. I enjoy looking at original artwork. My friends collect original artwork. So um, it's one of those things that I just have a soft spot for. I only have one piece of original art, and it's from a Hellboy comic. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is it from Mike I, himself? No, it's not from Mike. Actually, it's not even a Hellboy. It's a BPRD. I okay. want... I. I've seen your uh, your your original Mike art art piece, Mike Mignola art piece. Yeah, I got it. It's I don't know if you can see it, but it's over my shoulder here. Yeah. Where I turn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're up in the top. I know. I know you're a big Mike fan. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't know how you couldn't be. <laughs> I mean, I, dude, I'm, I'm basically obsessed with Mike. He's yeah. he's you know he's been a big influence like for me, just you know for reading and such. You know, like, I love the way he tells stories. I love the way he draws. It's, it's great. But, yeah. He's he's has a big uh, Frazetta influence early on too. One hundred percent. So I wanted to ask you about uh, 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 this Maine and Mill Brew. By the way, I saw that on your sto your Instagram stories earlier. Yeah, they just uh, they just released that second can design this uh, this afternoon. So how does that so how does that come about? So you you know because you're a freelance artist, you do all this work. So I mean, how did you get along? Get into that uh, the little not partnership? You know what I mean? Little little deal. Uh, it was actually just, uh, I happened to get a little lucky, uh, a good friend of mine and former instructor at the Kubert school, his name is, uh, Gabe Bridwell. His cousin works at Maine and Mill, I believe that's the story. Um, and You're sticking to it. they were looking for some artists and they knew that Gabe was an instructor at an art school. So they asked him if he could recommend anybody. And Gabe was kind enough to put my name in the hat. And uh, we started talking. They wanted to do some kind of retro cans based on nostalgia stuff from our youth. Classic and video games, classic comics. Exactly. So they, uh, we got on the idea of Mario Brothers, like a knockoff of Mario Brothers. Yeah. And then that's when we came up with uh, Rocco and uh, a knockoff Bowser character called Wart. Yeah. Um, I guess Wart is a process in beer making. There's a, there's a point where the beer, it's called Wart or something like that. Yeah. And uh, so we just called him Wart. That it, it's a very fun can design. It's a really fun can design. I'm glad, I'm glad I got to see it uh, before we did this stream. Uh, I So... You did, you do mostly these two dimensional. So you did this designer toy. You did the Mad Titan. I have the Galaxy Edition here, which is 
my favorite. I absolutely love this colorway. So what were the challenges you saw in designing this for the for 3D? By the way, because I by the way, I want to get all of these, including the giant ones. They make those you ever yeah, have you seen them in person? Are nuts. Uh, they're out of control. I saw them at I think it was last year's San Diego Con. I wasn't there, but a friend of mine was, and he saw them on display and he sent me a video. And I was surprised how big they were compared to the original size ones. Um, but with the with the design, I can't compliment the the sculptor enough who did the 3D design and his name escapes me right now and I apologize. But um, I, I don't think that he could have gotten any closer to what I had drawn. And that was wild to see an illustration that I made realized in a 3D, you know, physical form. Um, when Eric Scoggin and I were going back and forth through emails with the sketches, and uh, ideas, you know, I, I had done a handful of poses, trying to get that ape-like uh, pose. I know, such a, I got, I'm bringing <laughs> it back up so everyone could see it. Yeah. Total gorilla pose, like, And I think that was, it. I think that was all Eric's idea. He, he just combined Thanos and like a gorilla and just kind of let me go from there. So after some sketches and uh, some approvals, I guess Marvel liked it, Unruly liked it, Sideshow was cool with it, and uh, it just continued on until it became an actual thing. I'm glad it did because yeah, this is this is definitely one of the uh, centerpieces of my Marvel collection because you know I love Thanos. But I like that this is such an original interpretation. That's what I like about designer toys and art interpretation is that, yeah, you know, I'd love to get like a hot toy or a statue that's exactly who it is. But now this, I can make my own, I can, you know, apply my own meaning to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. Yeah, the so. designer toys are great. Yeah. And the, the crew that has come in for Unruly, all the other guys like Tracy, you know, they, they've, everybody's been knocking everything out of the park. Like it's really awesome stuff. It's some of, they're some of my favorite collectibles, you know, especially with the licensed stuff. Like I like, again, I like a statue or a hot toy or, 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 you know, a six scale or, or even like a small action figure, but to have these versions of, that are just strange and, you know, interpretive, you know, that's a lot more fun for me. Yeah. I totally so, agree. So now I want to talk about missing convention season and being stuck at home and <laughs> what it's like, what, what it's been like under quarantine for you. Uh, luckily for me, I really can't complain. Uh, I have had it very easy. Uh, I don't, I don't do this full time. I have a, like a, a night job that I do that pays the bills. So, uh, I'm technically an essential worker at my work. So the quarantine hasn't really stopped me, um, work wise, but you know, I'm still, I'm still drawing. Uh, I have been home with the kids more, which is really good. Right. You know, my wife has been a huge help, you know, when I'm going into work, taking care of the kids, um, you know, I can't thank her enough. What about your puppy? <laughs> that we got three of them. <laughs> you got three of them? Should, well, we should got, bring them on camera. Uh, I would, but they would just <laughs> they would steal the show. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, just put some ink on their paws. Let them let them do some art for us, you know? Yeah. But the, the dogs the dogs are doing really good. Thank you for asking. Greg is uh Greg, our newest one. Yeah. Wow, he's he'll be a year pretty soon. Next month he'll be a year old. So still still little baby. Oh yeah, you know, they grow them. faster, but they are still little babies. We take them for walks by the beach every day. That's nice. Get some exercise. Oh yeah. So here's the thing. Yes. Other than obviously the Dropkick Murphys, you know, because they're the best, one of the best bands in the world. Like, is there any like music or like a movie or a TV show that you like to put on in the background to, you know, while you're working to sort of like drown out the background, or do you work in silence? Uh, I don't work in silence. Uh, I can't listen to music when I draw because being a former drummer, I will start tapping along to whatever I'm listening to. Yeah. 
and then my hands are busy and I just can't get any drawing done. So music is tough for me to listen to while I draw. Yeah. But I will pop on any number of classic 80s movies yeah. that uh, I have seen hundreds of times. Stuff like Over the Top. Yeah. <laughs> from LA. I'm uh, sorry, Escape from New York. Yeah. Uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. Tango and Cash. So the we, Thing, right? The Thing is a great movie. The Thing is probably one of my favorite horror movies. Yeah. Uh, that know. and Night of the Comet is probably my favorite. Oh, my gosh. What you know when I did, everyone was showing those photos of of California and like yeah. I felt so bad at what was going on. Yeah, I was like, but then it immediately made me think of Night of the Comet. Yeah, it was so red. Yeah, it was terrifying. It was terrifying, but uh, yeah, man. So I mean, thank you, you know, for all this stuff. I mean, is there anything you want to plug? I'm watching. You see me turning my head to watch oh, your line. I hope. <laughs> no, I'm just getting so into it, man. I love it. Uh, is, do you have anything you want to plug for our for the viewers? Let them let them know what's going on, what you got going on. Uh, I have nothing really to plug. All I could ask the viewers is November third, if everybody could go out and vote. Uh, I hope that's right. successful. I'll keep it yeah. at that. Yeah, that's uh, important. Yeah, that's all I would like to ask. All right. Well, listen. Thank you so much for this drawing that I'm, you know, I'm going to be looking out uh, my mailbox for because everything that everyone draws is technically my property. I think oh, that's I the will, legalese. I think I that's will, the legalese that I read. I will send this out to you. I'll finish it up real nice. <laughs> I, I tell everybody, I'm like, just send me the art. And they're all like, yeah, smile. I was like, no, no, I'm just kidding. Keep, keep, keep <laughs> the art, right? Come on. I'll, I'll sell, sell it for charity or something. But I'm just going to keep asking for it anyways because that's my legal right. I think that's in my contract. Do I have a contract? Let me see. I don't even think <laughs> I do. I'm making up my own contract. But uh, yeah, man, this is awesome. And I can't wait to see more of the Holy Diver, man. All, you know, uh, the, the Diver. Sorry. The Diver? Oh, I thought it was Holy Diver. Did I get that uh, one? I originally started out as that, and then I, huh. I just changed it. Uh, I, I apologize. But, uh, but yeah. That, Threw me for a loop, man. Now I'm now you're embarrassing me on my own show. Oh, no, no. Don't, please don't do that. <laughs> it was all inspired by that song, so. Yeah, well. I wish I wish we had the rights to sing it. So let's just you know let's let's, <laughs> let's pretend to be jamming out to it. But uh, but listen, man, thank you so much. No, uh, you, it was man. great talking to you. I'll see you online. Yeah, uh, you know we're all going to follow you. Uh, you know on, on Instagram and Twitter. So, but yeah. thanks again and uh, have a great one. I can't wait to speak to you again, brother. All right, stay safe. Uh, you too. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for spending your Friday evening with us for this special episode of Ink Tank at Sideshow New York Con. We'll be back with a live episode of Ink Tank on Friday, the 16th of October at 11 a.m. Pacific time. In the meantime, make sure you're keeping up with uh, side.show slash NYCon for all the events that are coming up, including giveaways and more. I'm Alex Aronowitz. I'd like to give a special thanks to Mark, Greg, and Joe for putting up with all of my nonsense this evening. And uh, thank you all for watching.